it looks like the type of thing that I ended up drawing. I can't wait to see this flying around in our skies and the way they're going to do it is really quite cool. This is possibly the coolest thing I've seen here at the Dubai Air Show this year. It's an actual flying car. Not an EV toll that has multiple propellers that get in the way and mean that you need a complicated pilot's license and a vast track of land to land it in. This is an actual flying car that's designed for the cities today that can be used by anybody who is watching this video. This concept is gorgeous. Look at the beautiful lines. It looks like a car. It looks like the type of thing that I ended up drawing. What happened? Why did we end up with so many boring EV tolls when you've got something as exciting as this? I can't wait to see this flying around in our skies and the way they're going to do it is really quite cool. You see, they're planning to use this in sports first before we can get our hands on it in cities. That's right, we're gonna see races of these flying cars, perhaps across deserts and forests and fields away from human settlements, but it's going to be far more exciting than potentially any other motorsport that we have currently today. So I'm really excited and I can't wait to see this concept arriving very soon to you. So I'm here with Ben, who's gonna talk us through why this flying car actually looks like a flying car and not like many of the other eVTOL concepts that we've seen here at the Dubai Air Show this year. So tell us a bit about the design. Why does it look so unique? So we've really understood our use case uh, and we're trying to operate inside of a city. So obviously to do that, we need to be quite small and integrate with the infrastructure that's available, as well as reducing any additional infrastructure requirements. So to do that, we have a hidden propulsion system and we hide it all inside the body. So landing perimeters are reduced uh, and it's a lot safer and a lot quieter as well. We can do a lot to mitigate the noise. Um, but we're also aware of the battery requirements. So for lots of eBTOL concepts, they require running their power systems at full blast all the time if they're more of a drone typology. That's so energy intensive and you end up carrying a lot of battery weight. So to reduce that, when we're, we transition from vertical takeoff into cruise, we turn those propulsion systems down to about 30% and the wingless lifting body keeps us in the air. So we're much more efficient. We're about 80% more spatially efficient than uh, many other fixed wing urban air mobility uh, offerings. Okay, and so explain the flaws to me, as you did before, with the typical rotor design, uh, open rotors. So open rotors are very dangerous, obviously you can't get near them, you need a certain perimeter around them to be safe, and vehicles can't get close to each other either. So it becomes very difficult to operate safely within a city. Say with a uh, traditional open rotor aircraft, we require maybe 50% um, landing yes. perimeter. We've brought that right down to 15%. Um, so significantly smaller. And then also the way they tackle noise is usually by reducing the speed of the, of the blades uh, and blade design. We can do all the stuff with blade design, but we don't need to reduce the speed. Um, so yeah, because we can do active noise cancelling, sound dampening, that sort of thing. Amazing. And so this is the third prototype. Uh, and so what's sort of the next stage of this vehicle? So we're, this third generation is at half scale currently. We're currently developing this into a full-scale prototype. Uh, that'll be ready sort of by the end of 2024. Uh, and following that, we're looking to push that into, into a motorsports context. So this was actually gonna be sort of a racing uh, concept. So our long-term goal is to transport civilians around cities, but in order to get there, we're aware of the regulation and, and certifying uh, challenges that there are. So we wanna put on events, uh, motorsport events, that really allow certifiers to be able to see it in use under complex conditions. Uh, op vehicles operating close to each other, operating with infrastructure, that sort of thing. And it can be a good showcase for, not just for certifiers, but for public acceptance for members of the public as well. Perfect. And uh, okay, so the big questions that we have uh, is range and how many people the eventual model will be able to carry. So eventually we're looking at up to five people within the same vehicle footprint. Uh, so about six by three and a half meters. Uh, range, you're looking about an hour's flight time. So that's uh, anywhere between 80 and 100 kilometers. So for a city, that's, that's more than enough. 
Perfect. Yeah, it's because that makes sense because you think like an hour driving in a car is no range at all, but so an hour in this is, is quite a big distance. Do you need to have a pilot's license to operate this aircraft? So we're looking fully autonomous. So as integratable as possible, we want it to be as easily accessible as possible.